Hey, it's Mark Moppin with National Real Estate Network. I'm here this morning with Doug Durham. He's a very good attorney. I actually used him. Uh, and I, I wanted to talk to everybody today and talk to Doug. You know, as a real estate investor, you want to deal with somebody like Doug. He's an experienced real estate investor and a, and a good attorney at it. But a lot of times when you're you don't think you need an, an attorney, but in reality, there's a lot of things that affect investors. And, and I, I'm going to give you some really hard hitting examples. Uh, when the, the market crashed back in 2008 and that, I ended up in, in bankruptcy because I was over leveraged, Doug. And uh, that was like a horrible experience. And uh, you want to find a really, really good experienced bankruptcy attorney like Doug. And we're just going to talk about, you know, you're going to, as, a, as an investor, you're going to run into collection problems. You're going to run into litigation. Uh, I've got investor friends that have gotten <laughs> drunk driving arrests and that. So I kind of wanted to focus on a lot of things that uh, Doug's really experienced in uh, and you as an investor want to look at. So maybe just start, I'm just going to rattle off a few, like, Sometimes as an investor, you need to fast track a probate because of their net worth and that. That's something that Doug knows how to do. Uh, and if you've got like a, a litigation problem as an investor, but I know like uh, in my case as an investor, like if, if I didn't realize that there's life after bankruptcy, I thought the world had come to an end. Can you talk a moment on bankruptcy? On bankruptcy? Yeah. Sure. Uh, on bankruptcy, it affects every realm of the legal world. There is not one area in law that as a bankruptcy attorney, I have not learned something about. From real estate, divorce, criminal, probate, everything is affected by bankruptcy law. Yeah. A lot of people, there's a lot of myths and misconceptions about bankruptcy. Yeah. In fact, I have written a book called The Layman's Guide to consumer bankruptcy law in Michigan. And anybody that calls that number at the bottom of your screen and personally gives me their mailing address, I will mail you a free copy of this book. It will dispel a lot of the myths like life after bankruptcy, mm -hmm. how to reestablish your credit. You know, a lot of people think if they file bankruptcy, they're automatically going to lose their house or lose their car or lose their investments. That's not true. In fact, if you're facing a foreclosure and you've got that foreclosure notice pinned on your door, you can file a Chapter 13 and stops that foreclosure and allows you to keep that house. If you have multiple properties, sometimes a Chapter 13 will save that. If you have a lot of properties, you may have to go Chapter 11, which is a corporation bankruptcy. Or if you're just in over your head, let's say... You've been investing in real estate for a while and things have gone south for you for whatever reason. You've been ill or there's been a job loss or you've had some bad renters. You can file a Chapter 7. Let's say you ran up your credit cards fixing up a property and there's still no equity in the property. You can file a Chapter 7 and wipe out all those credit cards. That's what a Chapter 7 does. Yeah. Um, it, it, people think they're going to lose their car. You won't lose your car in a Chapter 7. You, If it's paid for, you can exempt it. Mm -hmm. If it's not paid for, you can reaffirm the debt with the, with the bank yeah. and continue to make your payments. Yeah. So th there's so many myths out there that are just simply not true when it comes to bankruptcy. Yeah, well. yeah. And you, and you really got to have the right attorney because I've seen a lot of people where they've gone to an attorney and they don't get a complete list of all their liabilities and that, and they, they mess up. They don't name a creditor that they should. You, you need to go to somebody that's going to work with you and be thorough. And, so, and, and that's, that's, that's something a lot of people don't know. If you miss a creditor in bankruptcy, you can amend and add that creditor indefinitely. I didn't even know that. A lot of people, don't, a lot of attorneys don't know that. Yeah. There's a case out there, it's called N. Ray Maj, M A J where it says any missed creditors of the debt existed prior to bankruptcy, yeah. it's still discharged. Yeah. You know what I think I want to do is like, we're going to, I'm going to hit a bunch of little topics today 
but this is really interesting, so we should like do a longer conversation about it, you know. So, and then I know like I had some friends of mine that went through a divorce and they owned a bunch of real estate, and that complicates too. So you need to. I know you do a lot of divorces too. So that's right. Yeah. I do a fair amount of divorce work, and I have done some cases. Well, in fact. I'm involved in a case right now where there's a number of commercial properties being involved. And you, you just can't navigate through this by yourself. I mean, if you've got investments and you're going through a divorce, you could, you've got to play your cards right because you could end up losing everything. Yeah. And you have, you have to have an equitable division of property. And you need an experienced lawyer that knows how to what the courts are looking for and what's fair to you and what's equitable. So, so you know, it's funny, uh, like you get married and like today, a lot of them do prenuptials and all this stuff. But in reality, the other thing I'm going to bring it up now is if you're in partnership as a real estate investor with somebody else and you guys have a limited liability company together, you absolutely need to have an operating agreement and you need to address uh, a planned divorce <laughs> that's and, right and have it set up ahead of time and that's the kind of stuff you need somebody like Doug Farr to, to put that together because if you don't you're going to have a problem yeah you need you need to know how, how to plan how to dissolve that relationship because eventually no matter what happens that relationship yeah. will resolve yeah exactly so you need to have it addressed so critical to Critical things as an investor you need to look at. Uh, so we got divorce, we've got that. Oh, but I got friends that have uh, lost everything over drunk driving and stuff. So, and I do know you do a lot of that. So you got a couple of bullet points for us on that. I got a couple of bullet points. First of all, I always like to say if you go to my drunk driving website, I say never plead guilty. Because I'll tell you what, 100% of the people that plead guilty are convicted. Now, I know what you're thinking. I got a drunk driving, it's the end of the world. Yeah. Not necessarily. There are ways to beat a drunk driving defense. Okay, so I have on my drunk driving website, there's a free ebook you can download, How to Win a Drunk Driving Case. It's on page one. My website is www dot o u i dash d u i dash drunk driving attorney michigan dot com and there's a free ebook on how to beat a drunk driving case yeah that's good and uh actually it's how i got to be really good friends with uh doug is i had a, a family member that had gotten in some trouble and doug uh bailed, got him out straightened around in it so that's uh, um you don't think about that stuff, but it comes up. So I guess the whole point of today's things are, you know, as an investor, you need to plan ahead. You need to have your contracts and your limited liability companies, and you're going to hit bumps in the road, and you need to go to somebody that's really knowledgeable. And that was what impressed me most about you, Doug, was like, uh, even with my family member, he was had done things where you normally go into all these depositions. He was able to get the same content, by simply doing a, a pre pre trial where they, they, everything gets recorded anyway, and you can use it. I don't know. I didn't understand, but it made sense, and he used it, and it works great. So, <laughs> call call Doug.